ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الكلام كلام الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد Indeed, Ikhwan, from the Ad'iyya and from the comprehensive supplications of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu narrates to us and informs us in the hadith that occurs in Sahih Muslim and elsewhere the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yad'u. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to supplicate saying, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-afafa wa al-ghina. He used to supplicate asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these four things. O oh Allah, indeed I ask you for huda, for guidance. What tuqa, secondly, for piety. Wal afaf, thirdly, chastity. Wal ghina, and fourthly, sufficiency. And that, brothers and sisters, is from the tremendous jawami' al adiya and from the tremendous comprehensive supplications of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that in essence encompassed the whole of the affairs of the life of the believer. Oh Allah, I ask you for huda. And huda, ayyuh al-ikhwa, with the scholars and with Ahlul Ilm, is of two main types. That Hidayatul Irshad, which is the guidance, ayyuh al ikhwa, of those who instruct, whether it be from among the prophets and the messengers, or whether it be from among the ulama and the people of knowledge, or whether it be from among their students, or even from the general believer who is acquainted with the guidance of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Al-Huda, the first type, Hidayatul Irshad, the guidance of instruction. And it is that which is at the hands, Ikhwan, of any one of us. Whenever he is in that situation, when he is asked and he is questioned concerning the affair of the deen of Allah Azza wa Jalla, one of its issues, and he is acquainted with the haqq in regards to that affair. He is acquainted with the truth. And so he shares that truth. He uh, 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 guides by way of the book and the sunnah and that which the companions of this ummah were upon Ridwan Allah alayhim. And the second type of guidance, Hidayatul Tawfiq. Hidayatul Tawfiq being the guidance of the heart. And that is that an individual may receive instruction but not necessarily be interested in it. He may receive instruction 
whether it be directly from one of the prophets and messengers, or one of the people of knowledge, or one of its students, or from the general Muslims, he may receive instruction, but may not necessarily take that on board. And so hidayah to tawfiq is the guidance of the heart, and that is that that individual takes on board the instruction. He implements it, he believes in it, he holds it to be correct, he holds it to be the truth. And thus he is guided, his heart is guided. And that is, ayyuhal ikhwan, not just that he accepts what those prophets and messengers or people of knowledge have given to him, but his heart absorbs it. His heart loves it. And thus he is truly guided. As far as a tuqa, that is the affair of piety and taqwa, then it is that a person guards and protects himself from that which he fears from the punishment of Allah. Guards and protects himself from that which he fears from the anger of Allah with a barrier of righteous action, with a barrier of good deeds and of khair, with a barrier of abstaining from that which Allah Azza wa Jal had prohibited him from. And that no doubt is taqwa. When someone asked Umar radiallahu anhu concerning taqwa and what it is, he responded by saying, how do you act if you are upon a path and a way that has upon it thorns and has upon it uh, prickly branches? What is it that one does? The person responded by saying that he avoids those thorns and those harms by moving to his left and to his right, avoiding them. He said, and that is taqwa. That a person carries out that which Allah Azza wa Jalla has commanded. And he stays away from the prohibitions. He performs those righteous actions. And he stays away from that which Allah Azza wa Jalla and his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, have warned us. As far as Al-Afaf, then it is that he guides, guards himself from the sins of the flesh. That he guards himself from that which the Messenger وسلم, mentioned that verily I have not left a fitna for this ummah greater upon the men than women. So he guards himself from that. He guards himself from illicit relations. He doesn't come close to it. He is protective and mindful of it. And of course, from the greatest forms of protection is that an individual marries. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, Ya ma'ashar al-shabaab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'a fal yatazawwaj, fa innahu aghadu lil-basar wa ahsanu lil-farj. O gathering of youth, whomsoever from among you is able to marry, then let him do so. Because it is better with the, for the protection of the private parts and for the lowering of the gaze. And whomsoever is not able, then let him fast. For indeed, in it is a protection for him. Yani, it lessens his shahwa, it lessens his desires. And the third or the fourth of the affairs that the Messenger وسلم, that he used to supplicate for is al ghina, sufficiency. And that is that Allah Azza wa Jal provides for him. And he is sufficed by that which Allah has given him. And thus he has his own richness in his heart. He is not covetous. And he does not panda over the dunya that is in the hands of others. La. He is happy with that which Allah Azza wa Jal has given him. Whether an abundance or a small amount. He is happy with that. He is pleased with it. He knows that that is his lot. And thus, he does not pursue that which Allah Azza wa Jal has made haram. 
Since the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned that there is not one of you except that his risk and his sustenance is written for him. And you will not pass away until you receive everything from that. فَأَجْمِلُوا فِي طَلَبِ الدُّنْيَا As the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, so be beautiful in your manner of seeking the dunya. Because it is already written. That is our firm, strong belief. And you are not going to change that which is already written by pursuing it by way of haram. Understand the concept. It is already written, Ya Abdullah. And so seek it in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala wa ba'd So this dua ayyuhal ikhwa is from the greatest of the ad'iyah and from the most comprehensive though the wording of the supplication is small If one were to memorize that which is present within it and supplicate by way of it sincerely then indeed it is the khair of the dunya and the hereafter for Ahl al-Ilm and the scholars, they mention that these words, ayyuh al-Ikhwa, were not just words and just random statements of khair that the messenger put together and would supplicate with la. They are words, ikhwan, that are deep in meaning, very relative. The order in which the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentioned these things, very relative. He used to supplicate and ask for huda, first and foremost, and then tuqa. And that is that the scholars they mention, Huda, the intent behind Huda here, is ilmun nafi'. The Huda, the guidance, is beneficial knowledge. As far as tuqa, piety, then as we mentioned, it revolves around carrying out the things that we have been commanded and staying away from the prohibitions. Thus the tuqa is amalun salih. The tuqa is righteous action. And since ilm, qabla al-qawli wal-amal, since knowledge precedes statement and action, the messenger began with that which had in it knowledge before action. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wa tuqa He would ask for righteous action before, ask for beneficial knowledge before righteous action. Likewise within it, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he discussed and mentioned that which is related to knowledge and action, just as he had in it a mention and discussed that which is related to staying and refraining from the sins of the flesh and sins related to wealth. And that carries within it that which will protect a person from the two forms of illness and sicknesses of the heart. The sickness of shubuhat and the sicknesses of the shahawat. The two forms of sickness that kill and destroy every heart. Shubuhat, the doubts and misconceptions. And the shahawat, the desires, whether it be the desires of the flesh or those things that Allah Azza wa Jal has made haram from wealth and other than that. In this dua, we have a gathering between those two affairs. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sought protection from the shubuhat by way of knowledge and action. And protection from the shahawat, from the desires, by seeking afaf and ghina, piety and sufficiency. Similarly, within it, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua for that which had in it dar al-mafasid, repelling evil. Since within the affair of supplicating for huda and tuqa, we have in that a protection against mafasid, 
a protection against evil. While afaf and ghina has in it bringing about chastity by way of marriage and sufficiency by way of wealth, which is to bring about good to an individual. And the scholars, they mention a principle that dar al-mafasid muqaddamun ala jalb al-masalih to repel evil takes precedence over bringing about good. And so we have within this supplication of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that which protects for Bani Adam, the affairs of his dunya, the affair of his deen, the affair of his dunya, and the affair of his akhirah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us and to bless us with that which is present within it. Al-Huda, wa tuqa wal afafa wal ghina nasal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yuwafikna wa iyakum lima yuhibbuhu wa yirda wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyina muhammad qumu ila salatikum yarhamakumullah